Welcome back to the channel. So a lot of us love our iPhones and on iOS is iMessage. That's the messaging app on iOS, but also other Apple hardware like laptops and desktops. So if you're using your Mac computer, you can send and receive iMessages without even touching your phone. Now, what if you love your iPhone, but you use either Linux or Windows, or you have a secondary Android device, or you know you just want to send and receive in the web well there's not really a way to do that but there is and it's called blue bubbles and today i'm going to show you how that works now you set up the server on a mac this can either be a physical mac or a vm i highly highly recommend a physical mac if you have an old one laying around or just get a like a 50 dollars old mac mini on ebay or you know wherever you do your online shopping just get a used one and you set that up as a server you can do it with a vm and if you want to see a video on that i'll show you that but enough people have to request that because that's going to be a pain in the butt video to do. I've done this once and it's just, uh, it's not an easy process. So let me know down in the comment section if you want to see that, but you run the server on a Mac and then you run the client on your windows machine, your Linux machine, your Android device, or just access it in the web to send and receive your iMessages. It works great. It's super reliable and it's easy to set up. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So let's jump right into it and, uh, we'll start off with the server. All right, so here we are on the Mac desktop, and the first thing we want to do is go out to the Blue Bubble site. Now, I'm just going to show you how to set up the server here, and then after this, we're going to go and set up the client. Now, the first thing you want to do before you install the server is make sure that your contacts are synchronized with your computer. I use uh, CardDAV for mine. If you're using your contacts in iCloud, it's probably already going to be synced. But whatever you're using for your contacts, make sure they're showing up on your desktop first or else when you go and set this up, when you get a new message, it's only going to show the phone number and not the contact name. Um, so we are on this blue bubbles installation guide and the easiest thing to do, there's, there's two places to get the downloads. There's one in the download area. Uh, but if you want the latest <laughs> and greatest files, you can go to their GitHub, which is what I re recommend. And I'll have these links down in the description. Um, so if we just scroll down here a little bit, you can see there's uh, links for the different clients, but we, what we want to get is this blue bubbles DMG file. This is the server file the one that 9.4 is the latest as of the time of this video so if that number is different when you watch this don't worry about it just get whatever the latest version is and the latest is going to be right at the top so now that we have that we're going to go through the installation which is super simple although there are two methods of installation and i'll get into that in just a second so all i did was open this up drag it over to my application folder then I am going to open it up and we're going to go through the setup here. So I'll just get this out of the way. It's verifying it. It's going to ask us if we're sure we want to open it. So give it just a second. Yeah, we want to open it. It's safe. Okay, so here we are at the splash screen for the server installation, and there's a bunch of links here, the installation guide, which is basically what we're doing in this video, uh, documentation, fact, things about the REST API. So if you want more information about uh, blue bubbles, you can click on any of these links and read these. Right now, we're just gonna hit next. Now on this screen is talking about permissions, and we wanna make sure that these both say pass uh, next to them. If they say failed, you can set it up. There'll be a link or you can follow these instructions to go into your security and privacy and set those as active. And then just make sure these both say pass before we continue on. And then we're going to hit next. Now, this is what I was talking about with two different methods to install this. One is using a Google login and one is a manual setup. Now, I definitely recommend the Google login. It's just much easier uh, if you don't have a Google account or don't wanna use your primary one for this, just go and set up another free one and you don't need a paid account or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue with Google and then it's gonna ask us for our Google login. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and pause this and then come back.
Okay, once you put your uh, login information, it's gonna come up with the screen and just tell you what permissions it's gonna need. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and hit allow on there. And this is just gonna go, if we scroll down a little bit, you can see everything that it's doing. What it's doing right now is setting up a project in Firebase and uh, setting it up so that the server can talk to that project. And what that's gonna allow us to do is access our messages from anywhere in the world without needing direct access to our machine. So that Firebase project is gonna act as kind of an in-between between the server and the client, but it's super fast and you get your messages right away. It's amazing how well this works. Now mine is done already. Yours is gonna take much longer. The only reason mine's done is because I've set this up before, it detected that there's already a project out there and it's just using that project. Yours is gonna take longer, so just be patient. As long as you see things happening here, uh, everything's good. And when it's done, it's gonna give you this double check mark here and the next button is gonna be lit up. So just be patient, wait for that to finish. You may need to walk away and get a drink or something. Come back and then hit next. Now this password is something that we're gonna to need to access the server every time we set up one of the clients. So make sure that you put something you'll remember here. And then once you enter that, make sure you hit the little save icon here to save that in there. Um, the next option is for the proxy setup. I recommend you just leave this as default. You can go in and set up these different proxies, but if you leave Cloudflare, which is just fine, it's gonna set it up automatically as part of this installation. So we're gonna hit next again. Now this private API setup is completely optional. You do not have to do this for this to work. It does allow things to work a little bit more seamlessly and quicker, uh, especially when you're dealing with media, but it's, it's completely optional. The downside of it is that you need to have SIP disabled on your Mac. Uh, if you don't know what that means or you don't uh, want to do that, then just skip right past this. If you wanna know how to do this, I can put up a video on how to disable SIP. Just let me know if you want that. But you do that need that disabled for this to work. So if you wanna use this and you have SIP disabled, I usually just do the private um, API, the message private API, and the FaceTime private API, it's gonna go ahead and launch those two applications here. Um, and then the FaceTime calling is experimental. I usually leave that off. I haven't really messed with that too much. So if you try that out and it works, let me know down in the comment section if you got that working. Uh, once you have those checked or you decide not to do this, go ahead and hit next. Uh, there's a couple of options here. I recommend choosing start with Mac OS and keep Mac OS awake. That way the server will always be running and you won't have to worry about uh, the computer going to sleep and you not being able to send or receive your messages. The other stuff here is just uh, kind of optional. I usually pick the auto install uh, and apply updates just to have the latest and greatest. And then we're gonna hit finish. And that's it, our server is all set up at this point. Uh, you'll probably see the FaceTime and Messages app flash up and then minimize again. Those stay running in the background, but this gives us our server address, our port, the email address associated with it and the computer ID associated with it. And we don't need to do anything else on the server now. We just need to leave it running, hooked up to the network, either wired or wireless. So now I'm gonna jump over to the desktop and show you how the client uh, installation goes. Okay, so here we are on the desktop, and in this case, I'm on a Linux desktop. I wanted to show you on here because the installation is a little bit different than it would be on Windows or even Android, but the configuration of the client is exactly the same, so I thought I'd show you kind of the most challenging or the one that people aren't used to the most. So we're on this GitHub page again that I showed you in the last section, and for the clients, we have the Android, which just takes you to the, the Play Store, the Windows, which takes you to the Windows Store, and we have the one for Linux and then the link for the web. So if we go to the Linux one, we have a flat hub, and a flat hub is basically an executable that runs on whatever Linux distribution you have. So uh, some dif distributions use different architectures. Flat hub doesn't really care about the architecture you use. So you can install it this way, but I'm on Endeavor OS, which is Arch Linux based. So I'm gonna go into my package manager here and just type in blue bubbles. It's gonna go and search all the packages and it found two different versions. If you look at this bottom one, it's a little bit older, so we're gonna get this top one. And install it, put in the password. Okay, and that's done. So now this part is exactly the same on whatever operating system you're on. We're gonna launch up Bluebubbles. 
and we're going to go through these steps. This is just obviously the welcome screen here. I'm going to hit next, and this has the server setup instructions. We can skip that because that's what I walked you through in the previous section. So if you want more details, you can click on that. But since we're all set up and the server's running, let's go ahead and hit next. And then here we're going to log in either the manual entry if you chose to go that route or log in with Google with the same account that we used to set up the server. So it created the Firebase server out under that account. We're going to go ahead and log in with that account. Okay, so once you log in, it's gonna to come to this screen and it's gonna ask you to allow these different permissions. Go ahead and select all to allow permissions to connect to that Firebase server that we created in the uh, server installation section and then hit continue. Now this is the password that I told you not to forget uh, for the server, so go ahead and type that in, whatever it is that you chose. It's connecting to the server, it's connected, and now it's asking us how many messages we wanna sync uh, for each chat. So I usually just go back like 10 or 15. I'll just go back 10 messages. Uh, that's how far you know in the history that you want for each one of the chats you have. So if you have a lot of chats and you choose a lot of messages, it's gonna take a long time to sync. So we're gonna start that sync. And this is gonna take a little while, so just let it run. Again, it's getting messages for each chat that you have uh, in iMessage. So it's gonna take a little while, but um, once it's done, you'll see it 100% complete, and then we can continue on. All right, so there we go. Once we're done, we get this fancy little uh, confetti splash screen, and we can go ahead and hit finish. And now it's done. It's asking us here if we wanna use those private API features that I talked about in the last section. So I turned them on, so I'm gonna go ahead and enable. And what I usually do is uh, send the typing indicators, and then I select these two, private API send and private API attachment send. Those just um, allow things to communicate much quicker. It makes a huge difference when you're dealing with media. So this uh, attachment send um, makes a big difference. And the private API send, uh, it really does make a difference with how fast you send and receive those messages. So once you have those selected, you can just hit back here and back on this one and there you go you have your uh, messages i'm going to go ahead and set a dark theme just because i like dark themes on everything so we'll uh, select that and then we'll go to dark all right and we're all set we have our uh, i messages we can send and receive them we can long press and do you know, the quick replies, the heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, just like you were on an iPhone. It works extremely well, especially with those private API features. It's almost instantaneous uh, getting the messages and sending them. And it's kind of interesting when you send a message, you hear your phone uh, play the sound as if you just sent it from the phone. So it works really well. And I've not had a problem with it on Linux, Windows, or Android. I haven't used the web that much, but it works on the web too. So if you're on a device, you know, some a Chromebook or something, and you want to access your iMessage, you can go out to the website on your Chromebook and send and receive iMessages from there as well. Works fantastically well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down in the comment section below. Again, if you want to see that tutorial on how to set up the Mac in uh, a VM, which I'm almost hoping you don't because it would be a pain in the butt video to put together. But if you want to see that, if enough people want it, let me know and I'll put that together so you don't have to have the physical Mac. Again, I recommend the physical Mac, but you can do it in a VM. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video.